Welcome to this YSL tutorial on Reporting Services 2016. This video is going to explain how to create datasets using SQL Server views. We're going to begin the video with a very quick recap of the differences between shared and embedded datasets, which we covered in the previous video, before we move into SQL Server Management Studio and explain how to create a view which you can use to populate your datasets. We'll explain the basics of selecting tables and columns and also how to filter and sort in views, or actually rather how not to sort in views, as you'll see later on in the video. We'll talk quickly about how you can make modifications to your views once they've been created and then the main part of the video which is about how to use your views in a data set. We'll also explain how you can join views to either other tables or other views in your data sets as well before the final part of the video quickly demonstrates that you can use your view in as many different report projects as you like. So not that much to do, not a particularly long video, let's get started. OK, so before we get started, there are a few basic things you'll need to make sure you've done, as always, for this video series. So once again, I'm going to point you to the SQL Server 2016 Getting Started tutorial. So you'll want to make sure you've got, of course, SQL Server 2016 installed and a couple of the management tools in the first two videos there explain how to do that. You can skip over most of the rest of the videos, but you want to make sure you've grabbed a copy of the YSL Movies database as well, if you want to use the same data that I'm using in this video. And of course, you'll want to make sure you've installed SQL Server data tools so that you can create report projects. So assuming that you've done all all of that already, we're going to head straight into Visual Studio and create a brand new report project. So from my start menu I've got a quick shortcut to Visual Studio 2015, it doesn't really matter which version of Visual Studio you happen to use, the, uh, the report project templates are pretty much the same in all of them. And then once Visual Studio is opened up, what we're going to do is create a brand new project. I'm not going to bother giving this new project a name, I'm just going to make sure that I'm looking at the Business Intelligence category, choosing Report Server Project. I'm going to dump this on my desktop just for the sake of demonstration, and as I say, I'm going to leave the name as it is, Report Project 1. Not very inventive, but there we go. So if I click OK, that will generate eventually, hopefully, in my new report project. Just to get set up before we can start creating our data sets, I'm going to create a shared data source. I might create a couple of different reports in this project. So let's add a shared data source by right clicking shared data sources in the top right hand corner there and then choose add new data source. I'm going to call this one movies, so I'm going to point it to my YSL movies database which I've already got installed. And then rather than type out the connection string, I'm going to hit the edit button there to allow me to build it. So I'm going to refer to my SQL 2016 training instance, so if I type in a full stop followed by a backslash, and again this will be very familiar to you if you've followed along with some of the previous videos in this series, so SQL 2016 training, that's the instance I'm going to use. I've got my movies database installed in there, so I can select that from the drop down list down towards the bottom, and then if I just click test connection to make myself feel better, as always, and then click OK a few times until my data source has been created final thing I'm going to do before we start talking about what this video is really about is create a brand new blank report. So if I right click the reports folder and then choose add new item and then from the list I'm going to choose report and again I'm not going to bother giving this a new name I'll just leave it called report one click add and then finally we'll be at the point where we can start talking about data sets. In the previous video in the series, we talked about the difference between shared and embedded datasets, and hopefully you remember from that that an embedded dataset is one that you create in the report data window and is only available to the single report in which you create it, whereas a shared dataset is one that you create in the Solution Explorer window and is available to every single report in the project, currently a grand total of one report at this stage. Just as a very quick recap, if I wanted to create an embedded data set, then what I would need first is a data source in the report. So I could do that by right clicking the data sources folder and choosing add data source. And then I can, I'm not going to bother changing its name, I can just tell it to use my shared data source reference called movies, the one that we just created. If I click OK there, I can then right click on that data source and choose to add a data set. I can then fill in the dialog box either by typing in a query, a select statement, a SQL select statement in this dialog box down here. Alternatively, I can hit the query designer button to allow me to build it. So if I wanted a bit of help with my SQL syntax, if I wasn't confident with which table names I had access to, I can use my query designer tool. And from there I can select from a list of tables by clicking the select table button and then choose a table to insert just by double clicking on it. I can add multiple tables if I wanted to, so I could include another table just by double clicking on that as well. And then if I wanted to select any columns, I can tick the boxes next to the column names and the fields are built up in the select statement in this little part of the designer. I don't want to proceed with this because if I create this embedded data set, it's only available to this single report, which is tedious to do every single report that I create. So I'm going to cancel from this dialog box and choose yes, I do want to cancel and then cancel again. 
if I wanted a shared data set, now that's available to every report that I create, so it can save me a lot of work. So to create a shared data set, all I need is a shared data source first, which I've already got. I can right click the shared data sets folder, then choose add new data set, and I get exactly the same dialog box that I've just seen. Just that when I create this shared data set, it won't appear in this folder here, it's going to appear in this folder here of course. So again I can either write out my select statement or hit the query designer button and it's exactly the same designer with exactly the same list of tables and fields etc. Now shared datasets are clearly convenient to use if you're likely to create lots of reports in the same project using the same set of data. But what happens if you wanted to create another new project or multiple different projects using the same query results? Shared datasets clearly aren't going to help in that case. Shared datasets are only available to the project in which you create them. So one thing that could help is using something called a view. This is one potential solution to that sort of problem. So you'll see there's a views tab here in the query designer when I choose to add tables. I've got tables and views. Views are something that belong to the underlying SQL Server database. And what this video is going to show you how to do is create those and then reference those when you create either your embedded or your shared data sets. So I'm just going to close down all the windows that I currently have open. I'm going to cancel out of the query designer and I'm going to cancel out of the shared data set properties dialog box. And then we're going to head off to SQL Server Management Studio and show you the basics of creating a simple view. Okay, so the next step is to head into SQL Server Management Studio, and if you followed along, as I say, with the SQL Server 2016 Getting Started series, that was covered in part two, how to install that. So if I head to my Start menu, I should have a quick shortcut for SQL Server Management Studio, and if I select that icon, and then eventually what's going to happen is it's going to ask me to connect to a particular instance of SQL Server. Here we go. So I'm going to connect to a database engine, and the one that I'm going to connect to is the same instance that I've just created my movie's data source on. So all I need to do here at this point just hit the connect button and eventually I should end up with a list of all the objects belonging to that server. So if I were to expand my databases folder, I've got my movies database there, and if I expand that I should have a views folder in there as well, which if I expand that finally there shouldn't be anything other than the built-in system views. So the next step is to start creating our own new view. You can create views in a couple of different ways. One technique would involve creating a new query and then writing out all the SQL code required to generate the view. Just for convenience in this video, what we're going to do is use essentially the same query designer that we've just seen in reporting services. So let's head to the views folder again and right click on it and then choose new view. And what you should see happen is that you get essentially exactly the same query designer that you get in your report project in Visual Studio. So to get started with this, I can just double click on a table. So let's go for the film table. That's going to be the main one in my query. Then if I wanted to include any more tables, I can do that as well. I can double click the direct table, for example. Then when I'm happy, I can close down the add table window and then start selecting columns. You may notice that there's a relationship or a join between these two tables. That indicates that there is a relationship built into the underlying database. And if you're interested in exactly how those work, then we've got a couple of videos that explain that. Then there's, there's part six, which covers the basics of relational databases, then there's part 8 as well which explains the specifics of the Wise Al Movies database. So I won't spend too much time talking about that right here. What I would like to do is select a few columns from my different tables. So let's have a go at creating, uh, selecting the film ID and title and release date. Then I'm also going to have the runtime minutes, the budget dollars, box office dollars, Oscar nominations and Oscar wins. Then from the director table I would like to include, let's say, the full name and also the DOB, date of birth, column. Should I decide that I wanted any more tables in the query, then that's fairly straightforward to do as well. If I just right click anywhere somewhere in the background at the top of the designer, I can choose add table. And then from there I could choose to include another table. Let's go for the certificate table this time. So if I double click that one and then close down the add table window again. I can rearrange these tables if I wanted to make my diagram a little bit neater, but this is pretty much the only time we're going to see it, so it doesn't matter too much unless you're incredibly fussy about these th sorts of things. From that I'm just going to include the certificate table, uh, sorry, certificate column from the certificate table. So that's the basic process of selecting tables and columns. You can test your query out at any stage by right clicking in the results panel down towards the bottom here and then just choosing to execute SQL or Control and R will do the same thing. So that will give you an idea about what sorts of results you're going to return. 
when you see the results you might start to think well there are a few things you could possibly improve upon for the final output in the reports. So let's say for example you wanted to include or just modify the column names. We can change the alias for each column to give them slightly more descriptive names or better short names. You often find that in real world databases that the, uh, the column names can be quite geeky looking full of symbols and code numbers etc. So you can give them an alias to give them essentially a friendly name. That's the term Microsoft like to use these days, friendly name. So for example we've got full name here that should we should really call that director or director name so let's find the full name column in the list of columns by scrolling down and once we found that from the director table we can simply type in an alias into the alias column so let's call this director and then we can also maybe change the DOB column name so that it's called date of birth. You may have noticed a little symbol pop up in the bottom to tell you that you've changed your query since it was last executed. You can right click again into the results and click execute SQL to update that so you'll see that as soon as you've changed the column name when you rerun the query it gives you the new alias as the column name so let's change date of birth as well so it's actually called date of birth and uh, we'll do that like so date of birth and again if I were to right click into the results and execute SQL I'll find that it's updated to the date of birth column name as well You can also apply filters to the results of the query that makes up your view. So for example, let's say we wanted to show only the Oscar winning films in this set of results. So I find the Oscar wins row and then select the filter box next to that. I can type in some basic criteria like greater than zero or greater than or equal to one if I prefer. So if I say greater than zero, as soon as I enter that, you'll see that it adds a where clause to the query that's being written at the bottom. I could of course have just written that out myself. I can, you can edit the query in this third panel of course, if you were going to do that, you probably would have just created a new query from scratch and then added the code to turn it into a view. Again, if I want to see the results of this, I've currently got 1200 rows. If I right click somewhere in the background and then choose Execute SQL, I've now only got 254 films that have actually won at least one Oscar. When you start adding criteria to multiple columns, you have to carefully consider whether these are and criteria or or criteria. This is where it might be slightly easier actually to write out the where clause manually, particularly if you're familiar with the way SQL works. So for example, if I wanted to show all the films that had won at least one Oscar and were at least 180 minutes in length, then I could add an extra criterion to the runtime minutes column. So in the filter box, what I could do there is say greater than or equal to 180. So if I add the filter to the same column, then these are AND criteria, so you can clearly see here that it's added the logical operator AND. And if I rerun my query results, I'm going to end up with 21 rows in total. So there's only 21 films that have won at least one Oscar with a length of at least 180 minutes. Now if I were to move that criterion that I've just added, the runtime minutes, if I were to cut it from the filter box and place it in the next column along the OR criterion, if I place it there and then hit enter, you'll see this time it adds the same criterion but it alters the logical operator so it's an OR rather than an AND. So that means if I were to run my query again, I'm going to end up with 263 films. So this time I'm seeing any films that have won at least one Oscar as well as, well as any films that haven't won any Oscars but have a runtime of at least 180 minutes. So there's one example there, War and Peace. It didn't win any Oscars, but its runtime is 208 minutes. So I'm just going to remove that, that uh, runtime criterion. So just be careful when you're adding multiple criteria as to which of these columns you add them to. Just carefully consider which what it is you're trying to achieve. Now there is one final tempting looking option that you could apply to the query that makes up your view and that's to apply a sort order to some of the columns. So let's say for example that I wanted to sort alphabetically by film name or by title. If I scroll up in the second part of the grid so I can find the title column and then I go to the sort type column in the design grid and choose ascending or descending. I'm going to go for ascending. When I do that, it's going to choose a sort order of one. So this is in case I select multiple columns to sort by. So you can see that I'm sorting by film title, which will be the first column that's sorted. Let's say, for example, I wanted to sort additionally in descending order of release date. So if two films had the same title, then the most recent one would appear at the top of the list. So that will apply a sort order of two. So this is really just determining the order in which the columns are listed in the order by clause. Now you may also have noticed that the uh, select segment has had the phrase top 100% added to it. This is required in order for a view to, to 
have, have an order by clause included without the top 100%. That's an illegal syntax. So that's a, that's a rule you have to follow that, but it gets added in for you automatically. If you were writing up your query from scratch, however, you would need to know that you would need to add that in the first place. If I were to right-click and execute the query, then I can see that this, in this case, in the design grid, this has actually worked. So I can see that the, uh, the films are listed alphabetically, starting with the numbers and then A's and B's, etc. However, be careful in the real world when you're using your views to populate, for instance, reporting services datasets or in queries in SQL Server. Microsoft's very own literature warns you that this might not actually work. So if I just find, this is on the, uh, the, the Microsoft Docs website, the create view statement in Transact SQL. If I scroll down far enough, I'm going to find this little lovely important note about the order by clause not being guaranteed to work when you query the view. Um, so don't rely on sourcing in views. I tend to avoid doing it in, at all when I, uh, when I create views. I don't bother adding the order by clause. You can always change the order of results from the view at a later stage. So what I'm going to do is go back to the SQL Server Management Studio tool and then I'm going to take away, I'm going to choose to unsort each of those two columns. Okay, so that's it for our basic view. All I would like to do at this stage is save it so that it's available to my report project. So to do that, I can either hit the Save button at the top, or I can press Control S, or I could just choose to close it and then choose Yes to confirm I want to save changes. So saving it is, is done in the normal way. I'm going to hit the Save button. I'm just going to call this Oscar Winning Films, which sounds like a sensible name for the view. So if I were to click OK at that point, the view will be saved. Then I can close down the designer. I don't need that for the time being. If you'd expanded your views folder, you may not have seen your view appear automatically. So one way to make that appear is to right click on it and choose the refresh option from the right click menu. Then you'll find I've got my new view, Oscar winning films. So all I need to do now is head back to my report project in Visual Studio and then choose to use that view when I create a dataset. I can do this for both shared and embedded datasets, but let's start with an embedded one. If I right click on my data source one in the report data window and choose add dataset, I can then, let's just rename it so it's called embedded, just so we can distinguish between the shared and the embedded one shortly. Then I'm going to use my query designer, but this time I'm going to select from a list of tables, but not a list of tables this time, I'm going to select from a list of views. So I click the Add Table button and then switch to the Views folder. It may be important to refresh the list. If it hasn't appeared automatically, you can click the Refresh button to make sure that your list of views appears. And then if I were to double click the Oscar winning films view, that gets inserted into my query in just the same way as any existing table would. So at this stage, all I need to do is treat this view as a table. That's how Microsoft described Microsoft described views as virtual tables. So I could choose to include all the columns or just the ones in which I'm interested. So let's go for the title and the release date and the runtime. And maybe let's have the director and the date of birth. And notice that you'll see that you get the aliased column names rather than the original one. So it's not full name and DOB. And let's have the certificate column there as well. I can include extra aliases, so I could alias my alias columns if I wanted to. So if I wanted to, for some bizarre reason, change date of birth back to DOB, then I could give it a different alias altogether, or um, I could give it a slightly more description, name, like born on, for example. So you're not stuck with the alias view names, uh, view column names. If you, if you wanted to change those, you're more than welcome to. I can apply sorting here. The sorting does work because this is in a query, so I could choose to sort in ascending order of film name, and I'll see that I don't get the silly top 100% clause added into the select statement. I can apply further filters, so if I wanted to see only the long films that have won Oscars, then I could apply a filter here for the runtime minutes as well. So let's change the filter there so it's greater than or equal to 180 for the runtime minutes. So you really can see that this is being treated just exactly as though it was a table. A view is no different, it's just the fact that the view sort of pulls together lots of different columns into a single entity that's available to as many different reports and projects as you like. So just to prove that this will work, if I were to click OK there and then click OK again, I'll see that I get my full data set created. I can then just insert a regular old table in there. So let's just insert a quick table into the report. And then I can select from my field selector a couple of these columns. Let's go for title and release date. And I can just, of course, click and drag them from their various locations there as well. So I can just click and drag them to attach them to that table. Having done all that, if I wanted to just run the report or preview it just to see the results, just to prove that it does work, not that you should really need that proof, of course it will work, otherwise why did I show it to you all? 
So eventually, once it's loaded, there we go. So those are the results of our view. You can do exactly the same thing for a shared data set, just very, very quickly. If I were to right click my shared data sets folder and choose add new data set, and then I'm going to call this one data set shared. And then I'm going to choose my query designer and click the add table button. And again, rather than choosing from tables, I'm going to choose from views this time. Again, you may need to refresh the list, so hit the refresh button to do that. When you can see your view, double click to insert it. Then this time, let's just include all the columns. So just to quickly cheat, I'm going to tick the all columns box so that I get everything from the Oscar winning films data, uh, sorry, view. If I then click OK and then OK one more time, I'll find that I've got my new shared data set available there as well. Now that means that I can create, back in the design view of my report, I can create a new data set which points to that shared one. So if I were to right click on the data sets folder in the report data window and choose add data set, I can tell this one to use the shared data set called data set shared. So let's say data set shared, I'll give it the same name, select the shared data set and then hit OK. So I've got all the columns from that underlying view again. Now you may well find that you need to make further design changes to your view after you've created it. So to do that you'll need to head back into SQL Server Management Studio and once you've found the view in the Views folder you can modify it in a couple of different ways. The simplest thing to do is to right click on the view and then choose Design which will take you straight back to the View Designer. And at this stage let's say I wanted to include some extra tables so let's head back to the top part of the Query Design Grid or the View Design Grid I should say and then I can right click in here and I can choose to add some more tables by clicking Add Table and then I'm going to choose let's say the Country Table and the Genre Table and the Studio Table. I can then close down the Add Table window. I'm not going to bother rearranging the design of my view I'm just going to check boxes for Country, Genre and Studio they don't need to be given any extra aliases or any sorting or any filters so let's just quickly save the view at that point and then close it down and then if I switch back to my report project I'll need to make sure that I can update my shared dataset and my embedded dataset to include those extra columns. Getting access to those new fields in my two datasets isn't too difficult either. Let's start with the embedded dataset. Simplest thing to do here is to right click on the dataset and then choose the query option, which will jump us straight into the query designer. If I were to just scroll down the list of fields available, I should already find that at the bottom of the list my view is updated to include country, genre and studio. And if I were to click OK on that dialog box, I'll find that those new fields are now available to my table as well, so I can just add those straight in to the table, no problem. For the embedded data set, if I were to double click or, or right click on my, um, my data set shared and choose data set properties, I can't go to the query because this is just a reference to my shared data set. So if I choose data set properties, I can choose to refresh fields here, although that won't do anything at this point. If I hit refresh fields and then click OK, you'll see that it hasn't brought in the new fields yet. What I need to do first is head to my shared data set in the solution explorer window and double click on it to open up the query designer. If I head to the Query Designer button then, I'll find that I should have those three new columns already selected, Country, Genre and Studio. They're already selected because I selected all columns earlier, so this will always include all the columns from that view. If I then click OK, and then I need to make sure that I refresh the field, so I click Refresh Fields, and then hit OK, and then once again, if I right click on my shared data set in the Report data window and choose Data Set Properties, click Refresh Fields here, and click OK, Finally, those fields are all available. So it's a little tiny bit more effort with a shared data set than with an embedded one, but it's still not too difficult to get access to all those new fields. One other thing it's worthwhile knowing how to do with a view is how to connect it or join it to other views or existing tables. A view is treated just like a table, it's a virtual table as Microsoft described it, so you can join it to other tables in exactly the same way. So if I were to right click on my embedded data set and choose to view its query, what I'd like to do is include the actor table and the role table to see who played which roles in which films. So what I'm going to do is right click in the top part of my design grid and choose to add table. Then I'm going to include the role table first and then the actor table. Then I can close down the add table window. Hopefully you can see here that the actor table and the role table has a built-in relationship in the database which means that it creates the correct inner join linking the actor ID to the actor ID column. Now the role table also has the ID of the film in which the role was played but because this is 
pointing to a, a view. The view has no built-in natural relationship to the roll table. But Fortunair can create an ad hoc join very intuitively just by clicking and dragging between the film ID and film ID columns. Very much to click and drag and you can create an ad hoc join that will create the correct join to link those tables together in this query. So from that point I can just include an extra couple of columns. Let's have the roll column from the role table and let's have the full name column from the actor table. What I'd like to do then is find the actor name column, or sorry, the full name column from the actor table and I'd like to modify it to give it an alias so that it's just called actor name, so it's distinguished from the director name of course. So having done that I can now click OK and I should find that my new columns have been added to my embedded data set and I can drag those two extra columns into my table just in the same way as usual and then finally preview the query or preview the report to see the final results and get both the role and the actor who played that role in the result set. So there you go, you can join views to either other views or to existing tables. Okay, well I guess there's just one last thing we should demonstrate in this particular video and that's to make sure that our view is available to any new future report project. So let's close this one down entirely. I'm going to close down this report first of all and then I'm going to head to the file menu and I'm going to choose to close the solution entirely. What I'm now going to do is create a brand new report project. Let's head to the file menu and choose new and then choose project. And then from the business intelligence category, I'm going to choose report server project, inventively called report project 2 this time. I'm going to click OK to create my new project. I'm going to generate a quick shared data source by right clicking shared data sources and choosing to add a new one. Hit the edit button and then type in the same server name that I used earlier on, so SQL 2016 training. Make sure I've selected my movies database from the drop down list and click OK and OK again. And then finally, what I want to do here is create a shared data set that will use the view that I've created. So let's right click shared data sets and choose to add a new one. I'm not going to bother changing its name, I'm just going to head straight to the query designer and then from the add table list I can enter the views folder or views tab and then double click Oscar winning films, choose all columns and then click OK, OK one more time and now I can use that data set in any new report in this brand new blank project. So that's one of the advantages I suppose of creating views rather than just shared data sets. Your view will be available for every single new project that you ever create. So as long as the, the view exists in the underlying database of course and it hasn't been deleted then you'll always have your view available so you can avoid creating the same query every single time you create a new project. Hope you found that one useful anyway. Thanks for watching. See you next time. If you like what you've seen here, why not head over to the YSL website where you can find loads more free resources including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching, see you next time.